Hello, I'm Jason with scienceandmath.com. Today we're going to continue working with fractions, but we're going to in fact review something that you've probably seen in your earlier studies, and that is the concept of what we call an improper fraction. So we've done a lot of groundwork so far with talking about fractions, talking about what they represent and how to kind of work with them a little bit. And uh, we specifically said that fractions most of the time are really used to describe when we have something less than one, when we have a, a fractional part of some whole object, right? So in this section, we're talking about improper fractions. And let me ask you a question. What do you think the word improper means? Well, it means something that's not quite right or something that's not quite appropriate or something like that. And so when you have an improper fraction, it's a fraction that looks a little bit odd frankly is what it really means and so let's go ahead and write down what an improper fraction is and then we'll give you some examples so that you can identify them so here we have an improper fraction it's a very simple definition an improper fraction has a larger numerator than denominator. And I know that that seems a little bit weird, but let's just dive into it and see if we can figure out why improper fractions are kind of neat. All right, so let's take a, uh, an example of something that's not improper, for instance, just to kind of get started. Let's look at a regular old fraction. This is not an improper fraction. This is a regular old fraction of something that we have looked at time and time again, and this is the fraction one half. And we've done this enough times, but just to quickly review, what this means is you take an object, let's say we have a candy bar here, and we cut it into two pieces because that's the bottom number, and then we take this candy bar and we only actually have one of the pieces, or let's say we give one away, and in that case we would have given away one half of the candy bar, and this is a regular fraction. Now let's say, what if we have a fraction that looks something like this? 3 over 2. The way you say this is 3 halves. So here we have 1 half, that means 1 out of 2 pieces, and here we have 3 halves. So this is what we call an improper fraction because it has a larger numerator, that means top number, than the denominator, that means the bottom number. So the numerator, the top of the fraction, is actually bigger or larger than the bottom of the fraction. So it's a little bit improper. Most fractions that we see aren't like that. Most of them are like one half or two thirds or three fourths where the top number is always smaller. So then you have to ask yourself, right, what does this mean if I have three halves of something? I mean, I understand if I take one half of a pizza, I take the pizza, I cut it into two pieces, and then I give one piece to my friend, and then I say I've given him one half of that pizza. But what does it mean when I have something over two, but the top number is actually bigger than the bottom number? It doesn't seem to make a lot of sense at first. All right, let's draw a picture and see if we can understand what this actually means. When you have the number three halves, you're still looking at it in the same way. The first thing you do is you look at the bottom number. So let's take a candy bar again. Let's just make sure it's the same size as the one that we had before, roughly, just so we can kind of compare them. So we have a candy bar, let's say, and we cut it into two pieces. So let's go ahead and cut this guy into two pieces again. Now in the top example, this means that we have only one half, so we only actually had one of the two pieces. But here it's saying we cut something into two pieces, but I actually have three pieces. And that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense, So, but let's just go through it. So what it's saying is, we, here is one half of that candy bar, okay? Here is two halves of that candy bar. This would be two out of two pieces, all right? So what this is saying is since I, I don't have one out of two pieces, that would be this, I don't have two out of two pieces, that's what I've drawn on the board, I actually have three out of two pieces. So what it means is not only do I have this, I actually have some more stuff over here. So let me draw another candy bar. And again, I'm going to cut this one into two pieces because my fraction is out of two. And then here's my third piece. It's very, 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 very important that you understand what we're doing here. All right? When you have a fraction, you look at the bottom number, and that is how many slices you're cutting the thing into, always. Okay? 
So here I have a candy bar and I'm cutting them into two pieces. Now the number on the top tells you how many of those pieces you actually have. So when it's one half, I have one of those two pieces. If it were two halves, two over two, then I would have two out of those two pieces. But I actually have three out of two pieces, which doesn't make a lot of sense at first, but then what you realize is you just need to draw another candy bar here and give me another one of these pieces. So you draw two of them, cutting each in half because of the bottom number, and I have three out of the two pieces. So what you can see here is that here is one candy bar, and here is like another half of a candy bar. So we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, but three halves as a fraction really is one and a half candy bars. It's one and a half candy bars. So the bottom line I want you to take away from, from this so far is that when you have an improper fraction, what they mean, what they represent, is when you're trying to, to describe when you have something greater than one. And I'll say that again. Improper fractions are always mean that you have more than one of something. All right, so that's very, very important because normally in fractions when you have two-thirds of a pizza or three-fourths of a pizza or one-eighth of a pizza or anything like that, it's always representing when you have less than a whole pizza. In this case, anytime you have an improper fraction, it's always representing when I have more than a whole pizza or whatever it is I'm talking about. That's why it's a little bit improper, okay? So let's do another example. I think you will start to understand a little bit more as we do just a couple of additional examples. Let's say we have five thirds of something. And again, it's improper. You can tell immediately because the top number is bigger than the bottom. So that's really the most important thing from this lesson. But if we wanted to try to draw this and figure out what I have, then let's do it in terms of our candy bars again. So now we have a candy bar. Let's say we have a bigger candy bar. But since the bottom number is three, we're dividing this into three pieces, all right? So if I were to take away from this candy bar, the first piece, that would be one out of three pieces. So this represents one third of the candy bar. If I take another piece away, this represents two thirds of a candy bar. If I take the third piece, so I take all three pieces that I cut, it's three out of three pieces, or three thirds of the candy bar, but I don't have three out of three pieces. I have five out of three pieces. So I need to keep going and, and kind of taking more candy. And the only way I can do that is to grab another candy bar. And again, I need to cut this into three equal pieces because of the way our fraction is set up. So if this is three pieces, then here is the fourth piece, and here is the fifth piece. So I have five out of three pieces. So what it's, rep five out of three pieces, when you say it like that, doesn't make a lot of sense. But what you really need to realize is when it's five thirds, it's representing one whole candy bar plus a fractional part. That's what the improper part of it is really representing. So to recap, regular fractions like one half, one third, the regular proper fractions where the smaller numbers on top, they always represent things smaller than one. You know, like cutting this into three pieces and having one third of a marker. That's a proper fraction. If it's improper, then the top number's bigger and it always means that you have more than one of something. That's what it means. All right, so to get a little bit of rapid fire practice with this, let's jump over and see if we can quickly identify if a fraction is proper or not. So let's say here is the first problem, nine tenths. And I ask you, is this proper or improper? The top number is smaller, so this is proper. So this is a proper fraction. So this is the kind of thing you might be asked to do for your homework or on a test or something. What if you have 10 ninths? That means 10 out of nine pieces. So I have more than one of something. And because the top number is bigger, this is called improper. Okay. Now what if I have five halves? Is this improper or proper? Top number is bigger, so this is improper. So you can see once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy. And this whole process, it works the same if you have big or small numbers. What if you have 37 over 50? So 37 fiftieths. Is this proper or improper? Well, the top number is smaller, so this is proper. This means you cut a pizza into 50 slices and then you only take 37, so I have less than a whole pizza in my, in my hands. Now what if I have, uh, for my next one, what if I have 17 
out of 11 pieces. That means I have more pieces than I originally cut to begin with. Top number's bigger, so this is M proper. And then the final example that we will have here is 82 over 81. Doesn't matter how close the numbers are, the top number is bigger here, so this is improper. Improper. So that about does it for this lesson. The most important thing for you to understand is that uh, you know, when you have fractions, most of the time you're using them to describe when you have less than one whole object, like half of a pizza or one third of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. But if the top number is bigger, it looks a little bit odd and that's why we call it improper. But all it really means is I have more than one whole item. So it usually means I have one whole object plus a fractional part from another second object that I had to grab. And I've tried to explain how that works here. So make sure you understand this. Uh, and then make sure you feel comfortable and confident with it. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. I'm Jason with scienceandmath.com. Follow me on to the next lesson where we will continue working and expanding on this to talk about mixed numbers, uh, you know, improper and proper, mixing back and forth between those types of fractions, and then moving on into common denominators and fraction, addition, and so on as we move through our topic sequence in fractions.